Hello everyone, this is Pastor Sean from Christians Unite, and this is another edition of Reading Through the Bible. On this edition of Reading Through the Bible, we are going to be reading Hebrews chapter 10. The Jewish law is not a full and faithful model of the real things. It is only a faint outline of the good things to come. The same sacrifices are offered for every year after. How can the law then, by means of these sacrifices, make perfect the people who come to God? If the people worshiping God had been made really clean from their sins, they would not feel guilty of sin anymore, and all the sacrifices would stop. As it is, however, the sacrifices serve to remind people of their sin year after year. For the blood of the bulls and the goats can never take sins away. For this reason, when Christ was about to come into the world, he said to God, You do not want the sacrifice and offerings of animals, but you have prepared a body for me. You are not pleased with the offerings of animals burned whole on the altar or with sacrifices to take away sins. Then I said, Here I am, O God, to do what you want me to, just as is written of me in the book of the law. First he said, You neither want nor are you pleased with sacrifices and offerings of animals, or with the offerings of animals burned on the altar of the sacrifices to take away sins. He said this even though all of these sacrifices are offered according to the law. Then he said, Here I am, O God, to do what you want me to do. So God does away with all the old sacrifices and puts the sacrifices of Christ in their place. Because Jesus Christ did what God wanted him to do, we are all made clean from sin by the offering that he made of his own body once and for all. Every Jewish priest stands and performs his services every day and offers the same sacrifices many times, but these sacrifices can never take away sins. Christ, however, offered one sacrifice for sins, an offering that is good forever, and then he sat down at the right side of God. There he now waits until God puts his enemies as a footstool under his feet. With one sacrifice, then he was made perfect for ever those who are clean from sin. For the Holy Spirit also gives us witness. First he says, This is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. And then he said, I will not remind, or I will not remember their sins and wicked deeds any longer. So when these have been forgiven, An offering to take away sins is no longer needed. So what this section of chapter 10 is talking about is that in the Old Testament, in order to be forgiven of sins, every year they had to go to the altar and offer some type of sacrifice for those sins. And normally this was an animal of some kind. Now when Jesus shows up, He died on the cross and took our sins, and it was a one-time thing. We no longer in history had to sacrifice animals anymore for sins because that doesn't pay the debt. The only thing that paid the debt for sin is Jesus Christ. That was the final payment. And for us, all we need to do is know that we are sinners And without that sacrifice of Christ, we're lost. But with it, if we accept that he is the only way, we will be redeemed. Let us come near to God. Verse 19. We have, then, brothers, complete freedom to go into the most holy place by means of the death of Jesus. He opened for us a new way, a living way, through the curtain, that is, through his own body. We have a great priest in charge of the house of God. 
Let us come near to God then with a sincere heart and sure faith. With hearts that have been made clean from a guilty conscience and bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold on firmly to the hope we profess. Because we can trust God to keep his promise. Let us be concerned with one another to help one another to show love and to do good. Let us not give up the habit of meeting together, as some are doing. Instead, let us encourage one another all the more, since you see that the day of the Lord is coming near. For there is no longer any sacrifice that will take away sins if we purposely go on sinning after the truth has been made known to us. Instead, all that is left is to be afraid of what will happen, the judgment and the fierce fire which will destroy those who oppose God. Anyone who disobeys the law of Moses is put to death without any mercy when judged guilty for the evidence of the two or three witnesses. What then of the man who despises the Son of God, who treat, treats as a cheap thing the blood of God's covenant, which made him pure? Who insults the spirit of grace? Just think, how much worse is the punishment he will deserve? For we know he who said, I will take revenge, I will pay, and who also said, the Lord will judge his people. It is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Remember how it was with you in the past. In those days, after God's light had shone on you, you suffered many things, yet were not defeated by the struggle. You were at times publicly insulted and mistreated, and at other times you were ready to join those who were being treated in this way. You shared the sufferings of prisoners, and when all your belongings were seized, you endured your loss gladly, because you knew that you still had for yourself some, something much better, which would last forever. Do not lose your courage, then, for it brings with a great reward. You need to be patient in order to do the will of God and receive what he promises. For as the scripture says, just a little while longer and he, will, and he who is coming will come. He will not delay. My righteous people, however, will believe and live. But if any of them turns back, I will not be pleased with him. We are not people who turn back and are lost. Instead, we have faith and are saved. So this section of scripture out of Hebrews 10 is talking about people that knew the truth, knew that Jesus is the only way, but somehow they still turned away and walked away from the faith. These people um, would be considered enemies of God because they knew the truth, yet despised and walked away from it. Um, and then it also mentions the law of Moses. So under the law of Moses, no one can be redeemed because um, there's no way to follow those laws knowing that Jesus is our redeemer. So we, we don't have to make sacrifices. Uh, we're no longer under the old covenant, the old laws of Moses. We are under the law of Christ. So we have a new law that we should follow to love God love people and follow Christ and be his disciples. So if we choose to do this, we will have eternal life. If we choose to walk away from it, knowing that this is what's true, you will have no eternal life. So choose wisely, choose Christ, choose him and you will be set free. Thank you for listening to this edition of Reading Through the Bible. We will be back next week with Chapter 9.